Hello and welcome to Behind the Lines. I'm Diane Dayton. Today we have a very interesting young woman with us. She is an author. She is also Miss Berks County. She is a school counselor and she's a small business owner. And I'm sure she's going to keep adding to that. <laughs> Jenna Martirana, thanks for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I can't wait. I'm so excited to talk to you about this new venture as an author yes. for this book. And it's how one little girl learned it's okay to not be okay. It's Pearl's purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the reasoning behind this is what, Jenna? I am somebody who lives with depression and anxiety, and I can look back on my childhood and see where those symptoms are present, but I didn't get help till I was a junior in high school. So Pearl's purpose is supposed to be a tool that teachers, school counselors, parents can use to open up those conversations around mental health and feelings with their kids at a young age because stigma is something that is learned. And I see that a lot with the students that I work with, that they don't have that filter yet that us adults often have when talking about mental health, and they want to keep it that way. So that they know they can always talk to someone about mental health. They can always talk to someone that they trust about how they're feeling. Absolutely. So when we look at Pearl, <laughs> which is what named after? Pearl's actually named after my car. She is my prized possession. Okay. She's a white and pink Jeep Renegade, and I love her. Okay. So Pearl is about what age in this book? Where, Pearl's where do you have about her? first, second grade, and that's kind of the where I have the book ages for. It can be used. I've done it with kindergarten, and third graders too, but the sweet spot I'd say is first and second. I find it really interesting, and I applaud you for this, that you are reaching out to really young people. Mm -hmm. Because you reach out to young people and you get everybody else too. Yeah. But you need to have a way and a vehicle to reach out mm -hmm. to young people. So is this because of your experience, this being that young? It's a mix of my experience living with mental illnesses as well as my passion as a school counselor to open up those conversations as a school counselor, we are really working to get away from the term guidance counselor because that's more vocational, whereas a school counselor is more the whole child. And so I wanted to make sure that kids felt comfortable going to their school counselor, knowing what their school counselor has to offer, what tools are available to them, so that if they do struggle with their mental health or if they're just having big feelings or a problem in school, that they know that they can go to their school counselor and that they're there to help them. Yeah. I think what is so amazing to me after reading this is how easy it is to understand. And you make it such a journey that makes sense that's easier to implement. Mm -hmm. You really dissect it well and bring us together. It's a little bit of a reflection of my own journey. Mm. So like I said, I was diagnosed um, when I was a junior in high school, but one of the characters, Pearl's teacher, is Miss Simon. In my case, the teacher that noticed I was struggling and reached out to my mom to say, hey, something's going on with Jenna was Senora Simmons. Ah. And so because I had that teacher that noticed the change in me, I was able to get the help that I need. So this book also is supposed to remind the adults in a child's life that they can be responsible for notice and that they should be responsible for noticing those changes in a child and to do something about it when they see that happen. Yeah, and it is a whole village with this, mm -hmm. isn't it? it? It truly is. Oh, yeah and reaching out to the family as well as to mm -hmm. the student too. Yes. Yeah. So when did the book come out? It was released, I published it April 4th. Okay. So pretty recently, yeah. Pretty recently. Yeah. And I think you're also doing readings and classes, is that right? Yes, I love going into elementary schools, going into local libraries to be able to share Pearl's message with others that it's okay to not be okay. It's such a fun experience to be able to read the story to children and hear their questions and hear their excitement around the topic. And I always love asking them, so what was the message at the end? And when they can mm. tell me it's okay to not be okay, then I know that the message really stuck with them. Well, so they really are getting it and mm -hmm. they're connecting with it yes. because of how this is presented. Yeah. And they feel open enough to talk about mm -hmm. it, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, little kids, they are more than happy to share anything <laughs> and everything with you. 
I think the first time that I came in contact with you about this was during one of the pageant, the scholarship yes. competitions. Yes. Because tell us a little bit more about your platform. So my platform is titled, It's Okay to Not Be Okay. As somebody with lived experience with mental health, I know how harmful the effects of stigma can be and how that hindered my own recovery journey. So I want to share my story with others to inspire hope in those who might be struggling because seven years ago, was my last suicide attempt. I'll be celebrating seven years clean in September. And to see where I am seven years ago to where I am today, I hope someone else who might be struggling realizes that it does get better and that mm. hope is possible. Yeah. It also puts a face to the mental illness. We often hear in the news that people with mental illnesses are violent or crazy, and that's not the case. By putting a face to the mental illness and being open about what I went through, people can realize that those living with mental illnesses are your friends, they're your family members, they're your coworkers, they're not anybody to be feared. They're people who need to be accepted and loved for who they are. Absolutely. And it was friends and family that also continued to reach out to you, is that right? Yes. Is that what, what helped you? You were talking about your last suicide attempt. Mm -hmm. There were more before. For that? Yes, I'm a five-time suicide attempt survivor. Okay, so how does someone reach out to you in a way that you're going to grasp onto and it makes sense? I always say that talking about mental health and suicide is uncomfortable, but you'd rather feel momentarily uncomfortable than to lose someone you loved. We're taught from a young age to step out of that comfort zone, that good things only happen when we're out of our comfort zone. So you need to be brave and you need to take that initiative. A saying we have is, I go first, you go second. And what that means is I will ask how you're feeling. Are you feeling suicidal? Are you struggling with your mental health? Because then the person who is struggling doesn't have to try and find the words to say, hey, I need help. Hey something's going on with me because oftentimes we feel like we're a burden. We don't want to tell people what's going on because we want to protect those around us. And in doing so, we struggle even more. And sometimes trying to fake it. And yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I know how that goes. You wear a mask because yeah. it's just easier. Yeah. I always say, if you ask somebody how they're doing, they say, oh, I'm fine. Ask them, no, really, how are you doing? Because I know how much pain can hide behind a smile. Absolutely. Well, you are doing a lot being involved with mm -hmm. the, you know, the scholarship competitions and Miss America program to give awareness to yes. this. So tell me what you continue to do with that. So I've actually aged out of the Miss America organization. So I'll be competing for the United States of America's Miss Pennsylvania okay. in September. Ironically, I will be competing that day on the anniversary of my last suicide attempt. So. It is a big accomplishment for me to be where I was to where I am and continuing to advocate for mental health. So I'm very excited to spread that message to another system and to really make people learn how important it is to talk about mental health. Absolutely. Now you also had a very interesting and have a very interesting talent with yes. Color Guard, right? Yes. So I do Color Guard for my talent. I've been doing Color Guard since ninth grade. Um, I started when I was a freshman in high school and then continued on throughout college. And when I got involved with pageants and had the talent phase of competition, I knew that while Color Guard was not a typical pageant talent, it was what I wanted to do because I wanted to bring something different to the world. And this past December, I had the opportunity of being the first person to bring Color Guard to the Miss America stage as part of their 100th anniversary festivity. So that was incredible to showcase something different, something unique. And not only was it a unique talent, I performed to a poem that I wrote about women's empowerment that was recorded in my own voice. So it was extra special to know that wow. my poetry and my voice got to the Miss America stage too. I think that's just wonderful Thank and that's you. amazing too. Do you happen to have it up on the internet anywhere? I know I have it on my social media pages, but I can definitely put it on YouTube. Okay. It was so exciting to be able to do that. Well, while we're talking about all that, yes. let's tell everybody where they can find you and then also where they can get the book. So Yes, so my Instagram information is Miss Berks County 2022. My Facebook is under the same username. I also have another one that is USOA Miss Berks County. Um, and then my website, you can see how my name is spelled here because it's a long one. 
um, jennamartorana.com. Okay. So just type in my name like that, dot com, and that's where all my information is. That's good. We can find out more about you. Well, we're going to take a short break, but we're going to be back with more about this amazing woman <laughs> and what she's up to. Stay with us. <laughs> LCTV 66 is your community channel, and your donations keep us on the air and help to produce more local programs. Send your tax-deductible donation of 500, 100, or more to the address on the screen. Or think of it this way. For the price of a couple of movie tickets, you can help support your community channel. Send what you can and be a part of all that is good about Lancaster County. Thank you for your tax-deductible donation to LCTV 66. Welcome back to Behind the Lines. If you're just joining us, we're with Jenna Martirana, and she's an author, as we've talked about before. She's Miss Berks County. She's a small business owner, and she's also a school counselor. The book we're talking about is Pearl's Purpose, which really talks about it's okay to not be yeah. okay. Yeah. And that's something we have to continue mm -hmm. to remember, that it really is okay. Yes. One of the things that you're doing is the Mental Health Queens. Now, this is for title holders. Tell me what that is. So I co-founded the Mental Health Queens in 2020 with a title holder from Texas at the time that Alex was Miss Fort Worth. And it started with a late night conversation. It was like 11 o'clock, well, 11 o'clock our time um, in April saying, hey, like we should really do something for Mental Health Awareness Month, which is May, because that was during the pandemic. Most of us couldn't really do a lot of in-person events and we also wanted to find a way to advocate mm. and to stay connected with each other because we know how important it was to stay connected during the pandemic. Oh yeah. And so we came up with the idea for the Mental Health Queens and it's a group me chat that has over 150 title holders from across the state, across different systems, who all either have platforms that are related to mental health, such as stigma, eating disorders, suicide prevention, bullying, any of those types of topics, or those who have lived experience with mental illness that want to advocate for it. And so we do so many different cool events, like I said, mm. it's Mental Health Awareness Month. So we have a whole calendar that I put together of different post ideas that they can do every day, such as Tech Tuesday, talking about mental health apps that are available, or Teen Thursday, talking about what teen resources are available because it just gives them the opportunity to really look at what they can use their social media for and how they can promote mental health awareness and mental health acceptance during the month. I think that's amazing. That's great. And I know you've done good work and have touched people through that already. Yes. Yeah. So let's put on another hat. Okay. I've got a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, you've got a lot. Of Small business. Yes. Tell me about that. What is it? So I started my business in 2017. It's called Sparkling Designs and Gifts, and I make a variety of custom items, mostly for pageant girls. I make everything from jackets with their titles to phone cases to face masks have been very popular. Never would have thought that would have been something I would have added to my shop, but here we are. And what's been so incredible is that I've been able to do over 900 title holders just within the Miss America organization, as well as other organizations. And my designs can be seen on national title holders like our current Miss America, Emma Broyles, and our current Miss Teen USA. So it's really exciting to see those items shine. And I know how special those items will be for the years to come for them. That's very cool. So where do we get these? So they're available on my Etsy shop, just like my book is, which is Sparkling Design Gifts, because, you know, things got to be a little shorter for the titles on Etsy. <laughs> right, right, right. So that's where I sell most of my stuff, and it's been really cool to see that grow in the last couple of years. I've done more orders this year already than I did all of last year. Wow. And so it's been very unique to learn how to juggle being an author, being in graduate school, being Miss Berks County, and being a business owner all at the same time. Yeah. So who makes these? Do you individually make all of these? Oh, yeah. Are you going to have to increase and get staff? <laughs> My mom is always <laughs> joking how I should start paying her and teach her how to do stuff. But I am so particular with everything that I don't really want anybody touching anything. I'm like, something could go wrong. I don't, like, I need to know that I went through my quality control. <laughs> Your quality control. I'm a little too particular sometimes, but hey, people are paying good money for it, so I want it to be perfect. That's right, too. Well, hey, and who knows what the future holds, too. And speaking of that, what do you see in the future for you, Jenna? 
I'm hoping to be an elementary school counselor. I recently graduated from Kutztown University with my Master of Science in School Counseling, so I am on the hunt for my first big girl job. I'm hoping to find the place where I can continue to spread my message amongst the students that it's okay to not be okay. Do you see writing another book? I could see me writing another book. I have already had people asking me, is this going to be a series? And I jokingly, since I had said my Pearl actually comes from my car's name, my previous car's name was Sylvia. And I was like, Sylvia, stop stigma. Oh, and I, I was love like, it. I'm like, hey, you never know. This that book actually only took me about an hour to write the whole thing. Okay. It took me a lot longer for the publication and the illustration process. But once I got started writing, it all just came out. And I always feel like I have so many ideas running through my head that who knows? I, I think you definitely have to do the Sylvia book. That just sounds <laughs> way too good. So tell me about the illustrations and how that came about because you're a first time author, correct? Mm -hmm. So this was a whole new process. Yes. So what's really cool that didn't exist when I was little is all the different resources that are out there to publish a book. So the creator of the illustrations, her name is Anand, and she's actually from Indonesia. And I found her on a website, I'm not sure if it's Fiverr, Fiverr, I think it's Fiverr, mm -hmm. that is all for digital designing, so illustrations, website design, social media content creation. And I looked for children's book illustrators and I found her illustrations and I love them. So I messaged her, told her what I was looking for, and here we are. Wow. That's great to have that close relationship mm -hmm. to be able to put it together like yes. this. And then this was published, was it self-published? Yes, so I use a self-publishing website called Blurb and they were really easy to work with. They had their own, um, their own program that you could design the book in. Granted, I'm very familiar using the program Canva to design everything because that's what I use for social media. So I designed it all in Canva, uploaded it to their program, and then you just upload it right to the website from there. Okay, great. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit more about this book because mm -hmm. it's about mental health. Yes. And I think all of us at some point in our lives have dealt with something that has either depressed us or not. And then there are those of us that have it longer. Mm -hmm. Is there a way that you see that we can set individuals up, set our children up, set up those around us to have better mental health? What would you say? Yeah, I mean, definitely we don't focus enough on taking care of our mental health at a young age. We, as adults, know, and I personally know, that we are very go, 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 mm -hmm. do everything you can. It doesn't matter how you feel. And that just isn't, it's not livable. It's not sustainable to live that yeah. way. And so Pearl's Purpose talks about different ways that you can take care of your mental health. She talks about when you're feeling sad, you can talk to your mom, you can talk to your dad or another trusted adult in your life. When you're feeling angry, you can take deep breaths until you feel better. And so it has a lot of coping skills that I teach my students to use when they're feeling these ways. Okay. Some of those also have to do with getting enough sleep. Yes. Right? Yeah. I mean, that's something I definitely struggle <laughs> with myself. I think most adults do. Yeah. But yeah, it talks about taking care of your body, getting enough sleep, fueling it with the yummy foods that you need to keep running, mm -hmm. um, all these different things because our mental health and our physical health are very closely related. It is, it's all tied together mm -hmm. and that's why too, exercise is so good in some way, shape or yes. form because not only do you feel good physically when you're done, maybe not right away after the workout, <laughs> but <laughs> but you do get this this head rush with it yeah, too that you feel good. releases all this like endorphins Ex and stuff. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So these are things I think we need to look at to do regularly. Exactly. And to make it a part of our lifestyle, mm -hmm. a part of who we are because it is good health even overall. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You can't have physical health without mental health and vice versa. It's all tied together. No, you really can't. And I think at this point, I mean, we've been talking about it for the past couple of years, I think more than we ever have. Yes. And I think coming through the pandemic that we did, it's more forefront too, because oh, yeah. it has really hit a lot of people mm -hmm. being isolated. So really talk, reach out. That's oh, really yeah. key, isn't it, Jenna? Yes. I mean, we are seeing the effects of the trauma of the pandemic, something that we talked about a lot about in my grad program was how we are gonna be the frontline responders to our children's mental health crises that will be coming up in the coming years. We know 
we're seeing the effects of the trauma already and that's just going to continue on. Yeah. So really need to be aware of what the warning signs are, what you can do and what resources are available when your child has that crisis. And those warning signs, signs are when they're not being normally who they were, right? Yeah, and that's what Pearl talks about, that she looks in the mirror and realizes she doesn't feel the way she used to. She wants to sleep a lot. She doesn't want to hang out with her friends. She doesn't yeah. enjoy the things that she once did. Those are common warning signs for depression. Yeah. Thank you for doing this. Thank you so and much. And the work that you're doing. Once again, so everybody knows, where can we find this and find you? Yeah, so you can purchase Pearl if you head to my website. You can go to jennamartorana.com, J-E-N-N-A-M-A-R-T-O-R-A-N-A, -N -N -A -A, and there's a banner at the top of my page that you can click to purchase Pearl's Purpose. Okay, so if we were to leave this with one real final thought from you, what do you want to leave with us, Jenna? I always say that you need to remember it's okay to not be okay. Yeah. And this too will pass as yes. we reach out mm -hmm. and start to take care Hope of ourselves. Hope is available, resources are available, and things do get better. They do. Thank you again. Thank you. All right. And thank you for joining us today too. I'm Diane Dayton with Behind the Lines, reminding you to look behind the lines. You might be surprised what you find.